Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a complex trigonometric expression. We have the trigonometry, we have the i, we have everything. It's a rational function, how do we simplify it? What's the simplest form? There's obviously more than one way to write it. I'm also going to show you, if I don't forget, the result from Wolfram Alpha. Now, by the way, um, I don't know if you were able to see it, but I have another channel that I focus, uh, where I focus on algebra and number theory problems, mainly some trigonometry as well. It's called CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Go ahead and check out the video that I made today because I forgot to mention that was a functional equation, but do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve that problem? Let us know in the comment section, okay? So anyways, let me proceed with this problem. How do you simplify something like this? Well, even though this may look very complicated, it is actually a easy expression. Why? Because look at this, one minus cosine theta is repeated, sine theta is repeated, the only difference is minus sine. And even if uh, that didn't matter, like let's say if we had a plus sign instead, this would be one, so that would be no point, right? Obviously, so that's the minus sign makes a difference. But if you call this A and if you call this B, then you, you, be get, you, you would be getting something like A plus BI divided by A minus BI, which I believe should be fairly easy to solve, don't you think? So let's go ahead and use that and let that be our first method, okay? So how do you simplify A plus BI divided by A minus B? Well, a complex number being divided by its conjugate requires more conjugates. So let's multiply by A plus BI the numerator will be a plus b i squared, which is a squared minus b squared. That comes from b squared i squared plus 2abi. And at the bottom, we're going to get a squared plus b squared. With the complex numbers, you don't get a difference of two squares. You get a sum of two squares. So sum of two squares actually can be factored in the complex world. Make sense? Some people told you, oh, no, you can't factor x squared plus 1. Yes, you can. Depend on which world you're in, x plus i x minus i, there you go. And you can even use this to integrate one over x squared plus one, which is another story. Maybe we can do a problem on that one one day, maybe Monday, who knows? So now we can go ahead and separate these, a squared minus b squared divided by a squared plus b squared plus two ab divided by a squared plus b squared, and that is multiplied by i. So that would be the imaginary part. So it looks like in the simplest form, this is the answer, so the result is also a complex number, right? I mean, you could also do this. Set this equal to x plus yi, cross multiply, and solve for x and y in terms of theta, cosine, sine, theta, whatever. Uh, but that would probably be more complicated. This simplifies the process. Now, all you have to do is replace a and b with what they are. What is a? 1 minus cosine theta. So let's do that. Uh, 1 minus cosine theta. We need to square that minus sine theta. Remember, b was sine theta, so that's going to be sine squared theta. And at the bottom, we're just going to have their sum, right? And then here, we're going to have 2ab divided by a squared plus b squared again. So we can keep a common denominator if you want it. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to do it, and then maybe we'll common uh, denominator at some point. I don't know. But how do you simplify such a trigonometric sum, right? Well, we can go ahead and expand it. 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Great. Divided by 1 minus 2 cosine theta, same thing, plus cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. This time it's a little different. And the numerator is going to be 2 sine theta minus 2 sine theta cosine theta divided by the same denominator, which is 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And then, of course, don't forget the i. i is important, okay? And it's the square root of negative 1, in case you didn't know. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of lecture videos. If you like algebra and trigonometry and number theory problems, like I said earlier, check out my other channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. So, what do we do? Well, first of all, notice that we can simplify this. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. 
And now the cosine squared gives me two cosine squared theta minus two cosine theta divided by sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. One plus one is equal to two. So that gives me two minus two cosine theta. And then that's going to be the same. Uh, and here, I don't know if it's going to help, but uh, we can factor out a two sine theta. I don't know if this is uh, better stay this way. Maybe we'll leave it like that for now. Two sine theta minus two sine theta cosine theta divided by same thing, two minus two cosine theta. By the way, we can factor out a two and simplify this a little bit on everything we can factor out a two. So this should give us, uh, by the way, we can factor out two cosine theta actually, that would be cosine theta minus one, right? And here we can actually factor out a negative two that would give us cosine theta minus one again, because this is negated, plus, Hmm. If I take out a two sine theta, I think I'll be getting one minus cosine theta as before. And if I take out a two, that'll be one minus cosine theta again. Uh-oh, a lot of things are canceling out. That's beautiful. Cancel, 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 cancel. These two and then the twos, all of them. Now, what do we get from here? Negative cosine theta plus i sine theta. How beautiful is that, right? Who would know that you would get such a simple expression? But what is that, right? Obviously, we want to be able to write it in a much simpler form. Maybe the second method is going to help us do that because I'm anyways going to introduce another way to do it. Let's go ahead and proceed with the second method and we can always come back to it if needed, okay? What was the problem? I forgot. Okay, it starts with 1 minus cosine theta plus i sine theta. I think that was a plus sign in the numerator, right? And a minus sign in the denominator. Great. So for my second method, I'm going to use a different idea. And that's what it, let me uh, tell you what it is. It's called double angle formulas. But you could also call them half angle formulas because they are pretty much the same. What am I talking about? Well, sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. And cosine 2x is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. But there are three formulas for cosine 2x. This could also be written as 2 cosine squared x minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So we're going to be using different versions of this formula. There's three versions and you need to know all of them. But where do they come from? Pythagorean theorem. It's not a secret, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do this. I have a positive one and I want to be uh, using the third one first. Why? because I want the one to cancel out. So I'm going to replace cosine theta, or in this case, theta is 2x. So x would be half of theta. Makes sense? Get the idea? So um, that doesn't matter though, right? Does it? Well, I said theta is equal to 2x. Yeah, theta is equal to 2x. So I'm going to use these formulas directly. So x would be half of theta. Make sense? Probably. Okay, so let's do it. Um, one minus, maybe I should write it this way first so that things become more clear because I'm confusing myself here as well as other people. Here we go. Okay, now let's work with double angles. I'm going to be using one minus two sine squared x here plus i times two sine x cosine x, which is the double angle for sine. Here, I want to use this, um, let's see, that's my one minus, same thing, never mind. I'm using the same formula twice, but this time I have a minus sign, okay? And now we're going to go ahead and simplify. One minus one is zero, one minus one is zero. We're going to get a positive two sine squared x plus i times two sine x cosine x divided by two sine squared x minus i times two sine x cosine x. Awesome. We can factor out a 2 sine x in the numerator. That would give me sine x plus i cosine x. And in the denominator, I can still factor out a 2 sine x, which is nice. That gives me sine x minus i times cosine x. 2 sine x cancel out, leaving us with something like this. How do I simplify that? Multiply by the conjugate or use some other formula. You probably know that Okay, cosine is an 
even function, so that doesn't really help. But sine is odd. If we can get a positive from sine, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace uh, x with, okay, x plus pi over 2. In other words, sine of x plus pi over 2 is going to be cosine x because sine is positive in the second quadrant. You get the idea. But cosine of x plus pi over 2 is negative sine x because cosine is negative in the second quadrant. You get the idea? I'm just assuming that x is acute, which is fine. And for the numerator, I would need to just flip them. So I would use pi over 2 minus x for that. In other words, sine pi over 2 minus x is the same as sine x. Okay, actually, I need to flip them. You know what? This is probably too complicated. Just multiply by the conjugates and you should get the answer. So now, let's go ahead and pick this up and let's try to convert it to something else. Negative cosine theta plus i sine theta. So I need to get rid of the negatives, right? To get rid of the negatives, I'm going to think about it this way. I want sine to be positive. I want it to stay the positive and I want cosine to become negative. Does that make sense at all? Okay. We can think about it this way too. I can replace negative 1 with i squared. Okay, this is probably better. And then factor out an i. That would give me i cosine theta plus sine theta. Okay. That would give me an i on the outside. And then to flip this, I can write this as follows. Sine theta can be replaced with cosine pi over 2 minus theta. And cosine theta can be replaced with sine of pi over 2 minus theta. So I'm doing a lot of transformations and I'm probably confusing myself and you as well. But uh, this is what I could come up with real quick. And then from here, I can write this as e to the power i times pi over 2 minus theta. And then, of course, I need to multiply by i, which is e to the power i pi over 2. When I add these, it's going to give me e to the power i times pi minus theta. There you go. Pi minus theta will do the work. I just couldn't think about it because it will bring it to the second quadrant without changing the names, which would keep the sine as positive and cosine as negative. Anyways, you get the idea. Let's go ahead and check the results from Wolfram Alpha. Uh-oh, Wolfram Alpha couldn't simplify this either. Too bad. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.